Um, good morning. Uh, can I project with my voice like this? Is that okay? No. no. I can also speak to... Oh, three mics. Wow. Um, hello. <laughs> yeah, I will, I'm very bad in being stable at one place. Like I'm a bit flexible. So I will do that. But before, I'm, I'm definitely I will come to no music earpieces. Uh, that was which was announced, but I want to do some other little experiments with you before and have a very small computer and I have to find back my little paper here and um, the first thing I would like to ask you is to freeze Very dramatic eh? Relax Freeze Not everyone freezes. Relax. Okay, good. That was for, was for all these small little body movements to uh, get them a bit into consciousness. Uh, I will do uh, some exercises today which are all emphasizing the activity of the audience uh, throughout a performance or in this case a lecture. So that was the first little intervention. Now I want to teach you uh, an audience position choreography. And it goes like this. Yeah, it doesn't wait. Um, Sit straight up with, uh, is this on? Yes. Um, with your ass back on the seat, your beautiful butts, parallel feet, hands on the legs, both hands. I have a microphone in my hand. I can't do it exactly. That's position number one. Position number two is lean back, ass front to the seat. One leg stays where it is, and the other one straightens out. Then you bend over um, with your elbows on your legs. Then you correct yourself into the middle of the chair with one leg across the other, doesn't matter which one. Weight on one hand. And what was the other one doing? Uh, uh, the other one is touching your face in whatever way. I told you it's difficult with the microphone system. I can't see if the ones in the backs are doing it, but I hope so. Okay, we go back to position number one, straight, parallel legs, hands on the, like, the good student. Some, some of you might remember not having been that person. Lean back, this is the favorite part, slowly, ask to the front of the seat, straight leg. Ah, arms crossed, that was in this one as well. Yeah, the, the, the arrogant audience. <laughs> oh God. And then, uh, no, sorry. This one. Concentrated or like just trying to not fall asleep. I'm not really sure which. And then correcting yourself. A bit quicker.
first one. Really slowly into the second position. Really on your own tempo. Don't imitate myself. Change leg. One last time. See in this one who's touching the mouse, who's touching the nose. Some people are touching other parts. <laughs> okay. People are sitting to the left, some people are sitting to the right. This might have to do with your neighbor, because some people try to get away from the neighbors, others trying to get into the neighbor somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's very nice. That's what is it, it already. I don't have much to say about these exercises, still I'm doing them. I will say something later. Um, a little questionnaire with my microphone again. Um, who's cold? How many people? Cold? You're a little bit chilly. Who's warm? Oh, yeah. Who is already hungry? Or still, actually? Who has to pee? One, two person. Who has to t pee a l tiny little bit? Like, like, so you could go, but you don't. Oh, that's quite a lot, actually. That's nice. Um, I mean, it's nice. Why is that nice, huh? <laughs> Makes no sense. Um, <laughs> super nice. Um, so my little perversion. Um, who gets uh, restless legs and shows sometimes? Like who's like this? Um, you know what I mean? Uh, one, two, three and a half, two, four, blah, 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 let's say fifteen. It's quite a lot for an audience of how many people are we? Maybe f forty-five. I'm not so good in that. Um, who is a tall sitter? Who sits? Who is like taller when sitting than when standing? I mean, relational-wise, this is hard to say. Some people know that. Anyone knows that? Okay. Um, maybe could you both get up? Just stand up. Yeah, you too. Ah, yeah. Okay. Good. Three people getting up. Okay. Taller. Second taller. Sit down, please. Ah, yeah. You're almost the same size when you're sitting down, but you're not the same size when you're standing. Okay. You don't have this. I'm. I. I. I feel it strongly when I'm sitting in. I'm a small sitter, so when I sit down in restaurants, I always try to get the higher chair if they're different chairs. Anyways. Um, who likes to eat before a show? Like, who likes to be full when to get in a show? I mean, full. Having eaten, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, okay, and who likes to be actually... Who likes to eat after the show, so you... Better go hungry into a show. More people. Okay, interesting. Who feels very conscious about their armpits when lifting their hands? <laughs> yeah, three people. I'm one of them. Four. Makes us four. Um, two more. So this, this is actually my um, anti or non-sociological uh, questionnaire. I, this this one's together with a sociolo sociolo sociologist, I'm not even sure, who was asking questions like who came by car? Uh, today actually a lot. Who came by car? Who earns more than 15,000 euros? Uh, yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> but, but that would be a question, somebody else. But I want to ask more questions about your physical and your mental stage when sitting in shows. Um, uh, who, uh, that, sorry, that was written for another place, so that doesn't make sense. Who feels the presence of the restaurant behind, restaurant behind you very strongly? Doesn't make sense here, no? Who can't forget... 
yesterday? Who is still very present with you? Who can't forget yesterday? What a week, 25 people. This was a strong day yesterday. Um, who thought already throughout my little lecture, a part of the lecture, at least three times about my very strong French accent? I don't have a French accent. <laughs> but who, who is very conscious about my accent when I'm speaking? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, who would now be ready for a four hours opera performance, sitting as an audience member, of course, not as a singer? You would be ready, physically ready, in the state of you could go in there now. So, and all the others, they couldn't. Is that true? Who is not really not ready for four hours opera experience now? <laughs> okay, thank you. I stop this. Thank you very much for being so nice answering all this to all these questions. Um, remember the last word you have said, or one of the last words, if you can't remember exactly, you have said before shutting up. Some of you have just talked. But yeah, I count to five. Why five? I count to five, and then you say it. Yeah, you can mumble it if you don't want to speak out loud. One, two, three, four, five. Nine. Somebody said six. <laughs> you, <laughs> you said six. Okay, once again. One, two, three, four, five. Nine. Nice. Um. Remember the soundscape in this place before we started this lecture. Between the two lectures, then it makes sense. Before I started talking. Remember all sitting down before I came up here. Remember the 50 minutes before you came into the school. Before you entered this building. Remember them backwards. I count silently to 15, and every count is one minute. And you try to walk backwards the way you came here until the train station, the car, the hotel, wherever you come from. I start counting now. One. Six. Eleven. Now you're all gone. Imagine this talk is over. No applause yet, just before the applause, you hear a plane from here to there over this building. Imagine you can hear planes, there are no windows, imagine. I stop talking, plane. Imagine a cuff from the technique, the person who sits in the back. Imagine the clapping. Maybe a doubtful clapping. Imagine the moment after the very last clap, just before you start speaking. Imagine the coffee break. Imagine getting up from your chair. Imagine how your bones feel when you get up after 45 minutes. You stretch. The talking gets louder. 
slowly people start talking. Try to imagine that situation. Imagine someone approaching you, talking to you. Imagine breaking the silence yourself. Imagine your voice for the first time after one hour. How do you hear your voice? Imagine your voice as a kid. How did you sound when you were a kid? The trick is to imagine calling your mom or your dad. For me, that works. Imagine, does this also work? Imagine the light fading out. Imagine some ambient music fading in. While I'm sitting here, you look at me, suddenly music comes up. Maybe horror music, violence, very quick. Imagine a camera zoom onto my face with some horror mu music at the same time. I'm trying not to look very weird. Maybe. Cut. Imagine a camera pan over the audience, over you. Imagine the different faces. Don't look around, just imagine that. From there to here. Imagine the camera stops and focuses on your face. Imagine you're sitting on the balcony of an opera house. Maybe that balcony? No, imagine a bit more. Baroque opera house. And you look down. Look now, look down, and imagine you're looking onto a stage. Like there. Imagine sitting in a cinema in the first row and you look up, very up, but uncomfortably up. Imagine how you slowly forget that you are actually sitting in an uncomfortable position. Imagine a black box theater. Lots of cool dancers, colorful t-shirts. Imagine a white gallery space. Everyone has a glass in their hand. Awful beer. Imagine another theater. Imagine another theater. And a third theater. Imagine a rock concert. Okay, that's the last one. I have a long list and I would love to talk to all of them. Here's the last one. Imagine a rock concert or pop concert or anything where you stand. Audience up high, uh, stage up high. Full. You see your friends in the middle of the crowd. Imagine going to your friends, trying to reach them. Imagine how you go through the people, touching all the bodies. Try to imagine the decisions you would make. Some of you are tall, some of you are small. You make different decisions how to go through this mass of people. Imagine the voices, people shouting. Some people making space, other people not making space. You go through. You reach your friends. You feel conscious about the fact that you stand in front of someone. Imagine how you slowly lose that consciousness and you don't give a damn. 
go back before you have reached your friends. Now you have three beers in your hand and you do the same thing. I give you 10 seconds to go through that crowd with three beers. One. Thank you. Listen to the left. Listen to the right. Listen to the space behind you. Listen to the space above your head. Listen to the front. Listen again to the left. Turn your head very slowly all the way to the right, very slowly, and keep listening to the left. All the way to the right you turn your head. Stay there. Now you are listening actually through the front to your, of your body, to the front of your body. Keep listening to the front of your body while you turn your head all the way to the other side. And the listening position stays. When you reach the other side, stay there. So you have turned your head all the way to the left. You're listening to the front, which means you're listening through your right, if it worked out. Keep listening through the right while you turn your head all the way back to the other side. Take the listening direction with you. Don't be bothered by this telephone, it doesn't matter. You now, if everything worked out, more or less, listening to the back of yourself. Through, I'm confused with sides, wait, through the right. Keep listening to the back of you while you turn your head back to the front, to me. You're now listening to your back if it worked out, take the listening direction over your head to the front to be back with me. I don't know when you're finished, actually, with this one. One of the ideas is that I don't know what you're actually doing. I think that is interesting, that there is no control from my side, and I have no um, overview of, about your actual experience. Still, I hope I can guide it a little bit, but I will say something about this later, or maybe in the after talk. I continue with... Um, what now slowly becomes part of my series of pieces called No Music. It's called No Music because there is no music being played back. Still, I think you are having, hopefully, a musical experience. Musical experience without any sound being played back, next to the fact that there are many sounds, of course, around us. Um, this emphasizes listening as a performative act, as a self-performative act. In that sense, it is not participatory, and I think, 
It is also not necessarily interactive. I would call that introactive. It is, I try to um, create activities within you, activities that where I have no ways to judge them or no ways to control them or to see how it goes. You do with it what you want. Um, it emphasizes your own performativity as an audience member, as uh, did the exercises before as well, I think. Um, I ex think these pieces that I sometimes conduct in these situations or that I sometimes give out in forms of scores, in forms of books, uh, in forms of audio guides as well, are um, not necessarily pieces, I mean, it doesn't matter, I don't care so much about the idea of, the, of if it is a work of art or not, but interesting for me is the fact that they are very close to closer to rehearsals than to actual performances, performativity within rehearsals. Uh, so this is a kind of a public rehearsals for something something that you can then later um, do by yourself. I teach you techniques or we together um, go through certain techniques and methodologies and then you go with it and you can um, um, yeah, you perform these pieces whenever you want or you, you use this to have um, ah, how do I say this? It is a kind of a Rehearsal for real life. Art as just being like the little yoga for your um, outside of this concert hall life. Um, I don't bother about this anymore. Um, art works as a guidance. Now comes the real yoga.
okay, what to do first? Um, I have, should I try that out? Can I? I wanted to try something out. The next step I wanted to do with some choir music in the, re in the background. That's a new experiment I'm doing. And had never done it, but I also want to do a techno song with you guys. So I'm a between like Mendelssohn or techno? <laughs> techno always wins, no? Okay, but before the techno, a little preparation. Uh, still back to the hand thing. And play. Straight behind and be in front of your ears. Both to the back. This is nice if you mumble a little bit or say something. Da, 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 ba, ba, ba. Everything is fine. You have an out-of-body experience now. This is how it will be just before you're dead. It's okay, actually. Yeah? Okay, silent. Thank you. Thank you. and slowly close it. Again. Try to have the same volume on both sides. Some of you are half deaf, I see. Maybe the hum also influences. Try to slowly go away. And then don't try here. Greet your neighbor. <laughs> okay, a little relaxation. And before I do the techno, just to relax your arms, I take the to time to say, like I had like three statements I wanted to make. I wanted to also have a little bit of theory. Um, I believe an audience is always active. Every audience is active, number one. They're also, you're also, an audience is also physically active. Bodies are part of the experience of the artwork. The chairs are part of the experience of the artwork. Sitting as a standing is moving, so you cannot sit still, even though it, you think you're sitting still or you stand still, you always move, your body always moves. I think um, that these movements are always in relation, uh, somehow in relationship to the works of art you see or you hear. I think that the bodies of the audience follow the performance, rewrite the performance maybe. Uh, reenact the performance live. They can also, I think, as a last step in this logic, influence the work of art. If you would, I mean, clearly, if you would all get up and leave, it would have an influence of a performer. That is a very clear, extreme example. But I think it is even in the micro dramaturgy of the audience that the, as at least live art is somehow influenced. Um, I think audience is therefore is not only self-performative, but also performative. Performativity for me, I understand as an act that changes reality in the moment that it is happening. So there is an, the activity of the audience is the way to change the reality of the performative situation. Um, I think the audience does this individually and it also does it collectively. There's a lot to say about this, but just I leave it here. So I think there is, there is a group dynamic as well as there is an interactivity, something you do to yourself. 
And I think that artworks can support this or emphasize this or don't do that. Me as an artist, I'm interested in artworks that do that, that um, try to shape exactly that relationship of performativity from out the audience and to get this, mom this momentum out of the performance. That was my little manifesto. Here comes the techno. I do like this, I close my hands and I open my hands uh, and you close your ears and you open your ears accordingly. So you don't imitate me, that happens to me all the time that people suddenly open their ears. <laughs> Stand there. <laughs> because you get beautiful and I would love to be a dancer, I am not. So this is a conducting tool. I conduct your ears, I close it, you close it, I open it. Let's try it. Still with some other genre. Close to your ears, right? A little input. I didn't say it's not predictable. Thank you.